group content? Like, you know, why is group content kind of like appealing to uh, players and developers? Um, I think, like, you know, first and foremost, it's something I've harped on a lot. You know, if you read my blog, you can understand this. Is like, is what we call the social fabric of the game. Um, you know, the social fabric is basically kind of like the 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 way like all the kind of the, the relationships and friendships and contacts in the game kind of weave together. Um, and basically, like this is what makes a game very sticky. Uh, this is what kind of keeps you in the game. And you know, from a developer point of view, especially if you're doing a you know, subscription-based you know uh, business model, you know, having people that are kind of like you know in the game is very important. You know, like one of the big things we heard a lot about EverQuest um when it, when the game started getting a little old is that people were like well i'm not really into the game anymore but my friends are there and so you know it's it's i mean i guess it's kind of like you know the idea of like you know you, there's the corner bar that you kind of like you know but then you know like a new manager takes over and it kind of gets a little run down and you know things aren't maintained very well and the quality of the drinks and food go down and it's like, well, I don't really like this place anymore. But you know what? We've just been coming here for the you know the past five years, so it's just kind of like you know tradition at this point. No weekly poker game. Right, right. You know, like you know, you know, it's one of those things that you know right. you, you it may not be your you know favorite thing anymore, but uh, you know, it's basically an excuse to kind of get together with other people. And you know, from a from a developer point of view, hey, that's great. You know, you're you're still paying us. Uh, and people, I mean, and people, you know, may 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 complain a bit about the stuff, but you know, like in at the end, you know, of the day, you know, no, you know, they're still uh, getting something out of it. Um, I think, you know, and kind of related to that, like you know, friendships are easier to form with repeated exposure, and group content means you're going to have repeated exposure to people. Um, you know, uh, as you kind of you know, as you meet the same people, like you know, like I played EverQuest for like three months, I think. Like, you know, I, I exchange, like, email addresses and stuff with, pe with people more freely back then than I do now. Um, you know, I, I'm, and I'm a fairly social person, so, um, but, like, you know, I know a lot of people where, you know, like, they met in EverQuest, and they kind of formed this kind of core group of people that they kind of consider their online kind of cadre that, um, you know, they brought to other games, but they, they never were able to kind of recapture that feeling of just kind of, like, making a whole bunch of friends and becoming a kind of the solid group quite the same um uh you know i think you know, the exception to this would be like you know what you've talked about a bit with uh role playing you know having kind of role playing groups and people that you know and then uh, uh that have a uh, um you know that, that you know have become kind of longer term friends mm -hmm. yeah uh like half the mods on my channel are from that group from for for me in in <laughs> WoW, right, right. Like like we we've, we've even though none of us play WoW anymore, none of us really. No, we all play fourteen now, really. Um, right, right. We we've we've been able to keep in touch with each other for the most part. Right, right. And like a lot of times, that kind of that you know by having that group content, you kind of you know get people together. Um, I think another kind of big bonus of group content is people are able to help each other a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um you know if if you're going through a dungeon and you're just having like no luck with it um you know getting a couple friends to kind of help you um is uh is kind of fun is is, is, a, lot, is a lot of fun it's like really great you know a uh, really great feeling that they're like oh, okay yeah you know because yeah, i know these people and i trust them more you know we can kind of like you know they, they help me through this kind of difficult content Whereas, you know, if you're playing a single-player game, like, you know, you're kind of beating your head against something. It's like, you know, your options are either to get good, find a cheat, or, you know, basically stop playing the game. You mean me trying to play Mighty Number no. 9? <laughs> you just need to get good. I rage quit so hard on that game. <laughs> I, I think the game needs to get good. But anyway, um, uh, and I think that... <laughs> I think uh, uh, the other the other big thing too is like you know uh, um, and this is kind of a little bit of a mixed bag. We'll get into you know kind of the dark side of this with the the, the cons of it, but um, you know basically the community is better able to police each other in group content because if you need other people and you run into an asshole, if that person's kind of an asshole to multiple people, they can basically get ostracized out of the community, uh, right. and that's one of the that's one of the problems that I think uh, World of Warcraft really ran into is that you know for a while it was you know it was kind of perceived as a very toxic game with toxic behavior um because nobody really needed to be on anybody else's good side in order to do the content you know 
uh, and this is where you kind of had the go, 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 you know, type attitude where other people were, you know, like I said, yeah, like I said before, other people were inefficient NPCs that were kind of keeping you from uh, achieving what you wanted to. You mean there were trusts? Uh, we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you know, so, you know, if you have these troublemakers, you've got people that are rude or whatnot. Like, you know, you can kind of like ostracize them. You can say, no, you know, you're, 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 you're a bad uh, actor in this community and, you know, we are going to put you on the outside and that's going to hinder your ability to play the game. Yeah. We had a few of those in uh, Star Wars Galaxies that they ended up uh, quitting the game right. because they, uh, they were known for scamming people in trades. And so they went like to play Eve? <sighs> I don't know, Dijar, <laughs> did, have you met somebody by the name of... <laughs> <laughs> right, right, swap notes to Dijar, I don't know. You know, yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, that's the thing is that, you know, like, you know, you can also kind of set different uh, uh, community standards, you know, for what's allowed and what's not, uh, you know, whereas, you know, Eve scamming's fine, whereas other games, you know, scamming's not appropriate. Um, I think in, in another kind of big bonus for group content is uh, along the lines of, uh, you know, uh, from a development point of view, is you can kind of like you're better able to manage challenging content. You know, people can kind of get carried um, if you put something really hard in there. Uh, you know, if you have if if the game, you know, if if it's possible for really good players to kind of like take really bad players under their wing and kind of help them through stuff. Which yeah. I mean, I think it ha- like in Final Fantasy XIV happens in dungeons a lot. In mm-hmm. um in my WoW rating days. Uh, in Wrath of the Lich King, it was widely acknowledged that the 25 man dun- uh, uh, raid ver- variants mm. for like Ice Crown Citadel um, was like a hundredfold easier than the 10 man version mm. because you just had so many more people. There, there was more wiggle room for errors to occur with the right. uh, scaling that they went with. Right. So we would have out. So my my guild, we would have our serious progression, uh, 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 t- t- uh, ten ten man runs. You know, for you know three days a week, and mm-hmm. then we'd have our um, carry twenty five man runs mm-hmm. uh, during the week uh, on the other side of the week, and that mm-hmm. would be how we would get. Uh, like our B teams up to par. Right. Um, so like mm. it, it, in that scaling, the having more people able to go in made it easier, even though technically it's the same fight. Right, right, right. No, exactly. And so, yeah. So basically I just kind of have group kind of, but you know, and, but you know, the, the thing is that, yeah, again, kind of going back to the kind of the idea of, Single player game. If you run into something you just can't do, uh, you know, you either you know rage quit, get good, or you know, find some cheat. Um, you mean people think, cheat like, in Dark Souls? Uh, so I've heard. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so basically, you know, you have this. Uh, uh, I think, like, yeah, I think it's like, you know, even if you know, even even though there's kind of negative uh, connotations to getting carried, I still think that you know, like. You know, for me, uh, if if I need to kind of help with something, like it's it, it's a lot better to kind of like you know, have that feeling of oh, I help you know friends help me, rather than like when I go to the web and you know input some cheat code in order to get some past something, it kind of makes me feel like I cheated the game a bit, and like yeah, you know, that usually like kills my interest in the game soon after. I think what we got, what game was it? Oh, Enter the Gungeon, which is like you know, I like I love everything about the game, mm-hmm. except for like you know the, there's a major element of the game where it's like you have to do these very complex boss fights without getting hit even once. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, you know, I got stuck on, I think it was like the second boss. Right, right. On that. And it's just like, I could not get that timing down on one of the transitions. And I'm, I was just, I, I stopped playing because I was just like, oh, I can't yeah, do yeah. This. <laughs> right, right. No. And I mean, like, you know, it, like, I love the game. I love the art style. I love the concept of it. And like, dungeon exploration was pretty fun mm-hmm. uh, but yeah the bosses just kind of killed it for me and like yeah and at one point i just got like ah, i downloaded a trainer and you know basically uh, uh you know basically kind of cheat my way past some of the stuff but really that kind of killed my interest in the game because i was like okay well you know i see what i need to do and i really have no interest in basically like 
pouring the amount of time the game is going to require to me to master this. Mm. Um, even assuming that, you know, like, hey, I have that level of reflexes. Yeah, you know, I, that I'm, yeah, I think you already bought it, but if you like Enter the Gungeon, try Moonlighter. It is... Yeah, I, I, I got Moonlighter. Yeah, yeah, no, I it really feels a little grindy to me but you know but and i guess, I guess that's like kind of another thing about you know pros for like you know group content is like you know if something feels grindy it feels a lot less grindy when you have other people around you know i think uh like my tolerance for grind is pretty low but like final fantasy has been doing this thing where you can run specific content that they really want you to run for you know specific reasons uh and you can get these uh, uh these irregular tombstones from a moogle which is just a currency uh, really yeah, it's basically just a currency, uh, and you get enough currency, and they can turn it in for rewards. Well, I kind of want some of the rewards, but like you know, like we're talking about something where like you know, you do like you know, part of a uh, twenty-four person raid uh, for two tombstones, and they, what it takes like fifteen, twenty minutes. Yeah, uh, I think on, twenty-five on minutes is like the maximum yeah. with a good group. Right, right, and so. Um, like, I just find that inc- incredibly mind numbing to do that alone. But like you know, like if I get you or you know some of our other friends into the, even you know jumping on voice chat, like you know suddenly it makes that thing like you know a, a thousand times better and more tolerable. Because, oh yeah, you know you can you can just do something else with it. When when I'm when I'm running content and I'm running it with friends, I I almost have to be in voice chat with them so that I don't feel like I want to kill myself. <laughs> because mm. i just i i i hate running dungeons dungeon dungeons are like one of my least favorite things in mmos to be honest yeah and like i'll run it solo but if i if i'm running stuff solo i am watching youtube i'm watching twitch i'm doing whatever i can to just numb myself to this other activity that i'm doing if i'm with right. friends i can we can talk and you know not not have to focus on the content but have a conversation right right but yeah and you know and so um i think that kind of one of the benefits is that you know for group content is uh you know players will have uh, more control when you start looking at things like social content like rp you know allowing players to kind of find people that they like hanging out with you know to find the thing that they uh they enjoy finding a group they enjoy i think it was it you know helps to make it a lot more enjoyable you know helps the game to feel a lot more enjoyable because uh you know and they don't have to kind of like uh, like you you know like you said you know you don't have to be like oh i hate dungeons and you know, the game's gonna make me run dungeons you know uh you know if you can find something like role play and find a good group and whatnot then you know it, like you it basically puts a lot more control in players hands and so the enjoyment is more you know up to them Rather than something you know necessarily that the uh, developers did or didn't do. You mean people do more than the ERP? Uh, I've heard rumors. I don't believe you. Like, prove it or it's not real. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna use the uh, the flat Earth fallacy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's interesting though, like you know, kind of like you talking about like dungeons being your least least favorite thing. Like dungeons, I think are my most favorite part of Final Fantasy fourteen. Um. You know, I'm a mentor, which is like, you know, you have to kind of jump through some hoops and then you get a little crown next to your name, which in theory means you help other people uh, in practice. You know, most people just want a little crown next Does to their name. Does this crown make me look fat? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, you know, I like most of the dungeons, I can basically give like a really brief explanations about how to do the boss fights, um, which kind of help people that yeah, haven't, you know, haven't gone through the dungeon before. Um, but yeah, like, I, like that's probably my favorite part of the game yeah i have mentor on my oldest character Mm. um and i i I used to really really have fun like teaching people dungeons unless it was arm veil because that dungeon can burn in a fire (laughs) Uh, but uh void mo uh brought up running extremes right with friends and they can be a lot of fun i used like uh, running extreme primals was was the content that I would do and have fun with until I got back into role playing again. Um, that used right. to be the content that I loved to do because it it, it gave me just a, just enough challenge, but then it became far easily farmable once the challenge had passed. Right. Um, 
and that was my enjoyable group content until the last like static quote unquote static group I was in kind of killed it for me <laughs> and that was in the middle of heaven's word and I, I never got back into primal farming again yeah like I've, I've never been very like super fond of extremes like you know I mean, extreme is kind of like you know a little bit like baby raids because it's been you know, like uh, the, the primal fights are what they call trials in the game are basically you know essentially boss fights and so you generally have to go through kind of a normal, or later they call them the hard version, even though you know there was no this basically the normal version, um, and uh, you know like very simple mechanics. And then there's the extreme version, which had a lot more complex mechanics and a lot more, or you know required a lot more organization and knowledge of mechanics in order to uh, uh, complete. Um, and like yeah, like, you know like the, the extremes weren't bad, but like you know, I, I, you know, I was never really taking with them I mean, the most i do usually with extremes is like the then the next uh next uh, um expansion afterwards then i'll go back and do stuff with smaller groups to get the drops mm -hmm. that i want or the rewards yeah. i want like you know because a lot of those you know have mounts and so i got all my ponies in heaven's ward i only really got uh birds from heaven's ward and, sh and uh, uh uh storm blood yeah i'm actually I'm, working on my ponies on my current character right now Right. Which... I have no interest in doing uh, dogs yet until kind of the expansion. No, oh, my doggos. I mean, like, I li I I collect minions and mounts, but like, you know, it's just like, you know, this is not the type of content that I really truly enjoy doing. So. Okay, I did a lie earlier. I did farm Susano and Lakshmi when uh... Stormwood first came out, but then I moved servers, and I was just like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> right. Right. 